What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play .hack GU Volume 2. Last time, we got a brand new town! And it's so nice! I like it a lot more than Macanu, actually. Macanu, I don't know. I liked Macanu in this game. I didn't think it was nearly as good as Macanu in the first game. Um, but, you know what? I did like it. It is a little too big, though, and thankfully this new town, Doldona, is, uh, is smaller. It's more compact. It's it's more focused. Like there's less empty space in it, except for this one little valley towards the at home. But you know what? I'll take it. Whatever. It's fun to ride your bike down there anyway. So that's rain and cloud. We just have to take them out. If we plant hashtag them, rain and hashtag cloud. We should be able to weaken them considerably. <laughs> Why are there hashtags there? Let's fight them later. After we plan all the ohm devices. First, we need to go find the hills. Yeah, so if you missed it last time, Syllabus and Gaspard were eager to do a quest for us upon visiting our new at-home. Um, and it's one of those vital Vista quests where when you complete the quest, you can unlock a feature back in Macanu that will keep track of some kind of progress in your game and reward you after you, you know, get to certain points of the progress. I kind of, I forget which one he's doing here. I think this is the one where he'll keep track of how many times you save Mecha Grunty, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, yeah, so this is actually a very similar quest to something we experienced in Volume 1. I'm not sure if it was the same Vital Vista, but it's basically the same... Oh, there's a powerful enemy that got out of my control, or a robot, or whatever, and you gotta plant three whatevers to weaken it around the field. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like a giant robot. I can't imagine it being anyone other than this doctor here, because there's the doctor that keeps track of the Mecha Grunties, and there's the doctor that keeps track of the lucky animals. I don't think that would be the lucky animal guy. And then there's the doctor that keeps track of um, the chim spheres you collect. That could have been something. I, I don't know. Maybe that's this guy. I, I don't know. I always get the chim sphere guy and the mecha grunty guy uh, mixed up. But either way, it's like the same quest. Um, I was debating whether or not I was going to show this quest at all since we've basically seen the same thing. But, you know, it's early game. We're still... For anyone joining into Volume 2 that didn't go through Volume 1, you know, it is a good time to show off some more of the battle system and other characters since all we've really had to deal with was Coon and Pi. And no offense to Coon or Pi, just... I don't know. It's nice having Syllabus and Gaspard around. I I'm surprised how much Syllabus and Gaspard have grown on me. Uh, I, I think I told this at the start of the Volume 1 Let's Play, but... If I didn't, or just to refresh anybody, um, I, I was just, I was a very big anime fan when I first, when I did my first playthrough of these games. So Syllabus and Gaspard, as lame and boring as they were compared to everybody else, weren't exactly characters I was thrilled with. But then after I just kind of lost almost all of my interest in anime, and I played this game again after that, uh, Syllab Syllabus and Gaspard kind of grew on me just because of how normal they were. You know, I, a, bi a big thing I complain about this game is all the melodrama, and Syllabus and Gaspard don't really bring a lot of melodrama to the table, and I, I am pretty thankful for that. And you know, it it's also cool just to, like, be playing the game. I, I like, I it's not always the most exciting thing, like, in the plot itself. In fact, it almost never is. But one of the things I do like in, like, any dot .hack game are, like, quiet moments between, like, big story things, and, you know, Kite and Haseo, they, they all have, like, the burden of, like, trying to, you know, uncover the world's mysteries and find out what's up with the comas and stuff like that. But, um, it's nice when they can just, like, take a break and just play the game like a normal person. It's kind of a double-edged sword, though, because a lot of those breaks happen, you know, a little more often than they should, and it, it does add to a lot of the padding in the game, unfortunately. Um, 
I'm not sure if this is one of the required side quests before the plot can advance. I, I'm pretty sure it is, though, just because the quest started in a plot... Uh, I don't want to say plot-heavy moment, but... And, and it'll end with a uh, plot-heavy uh, moment, too, at the end of the video. And I don't know if you guys just noticed that, but Syllabus and Gaspard went to run to kick those chimchims on their own. And it sounds so stupid, but this is one of my favorite things that Volume 2 did. I love that they can do that. It's so... It, it's so good. I, I don't mind collecting shim spheres nearly as much when I don't have to do them now. Um, you know, when you get, like, those big trees or mushrooms or whatever that drop, like, ten of them at once, it, it's, it is fun to, like, kick them and everything like that. But when you're stuck in a dungeon and you need to open shim doors and all you have are those stupid little railway things where three come out, like, every ten seconds or so, it, it becomes a pain in the ass to, like, collect shim spheres. But now, all you really have to do is just press the button to eject the steam to knock the chims off that railway, and whoever's with you will go and kick them. And if you're lucky, if they're, like, right behind you, sometimes the chims will fall directly on them, and they'll just kick them for you without even moving. So, it's annoying how much you have to wait still, but it is a huge improvement from Volume 1. It may not seem like a big deal because of just how much of the game is similar, but hey, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Shim Spheres are not my favorite addition to GU, so anything to help grinding them would be better. To make grinding them better, I should say. Uh, I'm all more than welcome. <sighs> yeah, vol it's weird because Volume 2... Like, I ended up finding a lot of those, like, trees and mushrooms and stuff that gave you a lot of chims at once. So I didn't really have a problem with chim spheres too much in Volume 2. But in Volume 3, I hardly got any at all. And they're out there, they do exist. But, like, for the story parts you have to go to, I just felt like, you know, I, I was running out of chim spheres a lot. And I guess if I wasn't recording and I wasn't really so much focusing on time, I I'd spend a little more time, like, maxing out my Chim Spheres, so I wouldn't have really have to worry about it, but, uh, I don't know. Here's another thing that they did from Volume 2. Yeah, they changed Mecha Grunty's voice for some reason, and they changed it again in Volume 3. Like, I don't know, I guess they wanted it to sound cuter? I, I liked how he sounded better in Volume 1, which is weird, because I, he annoyed the shit out of me in Volume 1. And he doesn't annoy me here, but I guess just getting used to it, it was... It sounded silly enough in Volume 1, and now it just sounds, like, cutesy. In Volume 3, he sounds more like how he sounds in Volume 1, but it's kind of... I, I don't know, they use some kind of filter to, like lower the voice or something to make it sound deeper. Did you see his, how Sayo just, like, jumped off that motorcycle? It's like... <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird there's a motorcycle in this game. Like, and I guess it shouldn't be too weird because they do focus a lot on, like, the steampunk stuff. But, I don't know. Like... Before anything else, I, I still kind of view the world as, like... A fantasy RPG, so it's, it's weird that there's, like, a motorcycle in here. It just kind of, like, adds to, like, the edginess more. It's like... <laughs> I don't know, I, I've made comparisons before about Hisayo being, like, Shadow of the Hedgehog, and just him riding the motorcycle. <laughs> it's just, like... <laughs> Every time I get on that motorcycle, I think of <laughs> that opening song to Shadow of the Hedgehog. <laughs> Sorry, I just... I don't know. I, I don't know why they made Haseo, like, so edgy. I, I, dot hack wasn't really something that I felt like needed edge to it. 
It's like, I, I really want to, like, research, like, the development history of Dot Hack GU just to answer some personal questions of mine. Like, were they looking at it and being like, Wow, Dot Hack didn't sell very well. What can we do to draw in more people? And someone's like, Let's make him a badass instead. Kite was boring. Let's dress him in black and red and have him drive a motorcycle around. And have him say damn and bastard a lot. And then... <laughs> I don't know, it's so... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing so much. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm laughing so much. <laughs> I just... I, I watched the Death Note movie that came out on Netflix the other day. The new one that everyone says is, like, super terrible, but it's, like honestly okay um but you know it, after watching it it made me want to um watch the series again it, it's been a very long time since i watched death note i don't think i've watched it outside of when it aired on adult swim like 10 years ago um so i i've remembered almost nothing about it but <laughs> the reason i'm laughing so much is because i've i just got to the part where they put the second intro in, and they do that crazy, hilarious metal song, <laughs> and it just, like, opens up with a bunch of light faces, just, like, laughing as, like, some guys just going, like, Bruh! It's just, I don't know, it's so funny to me. It's so fucking over the top and unnecessary, and I love it. And I just can't get it out of my head. I just keep on thinking about it, like, over and over and over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, like... <laughs> I don't know, like, there's a lot of crazy visuals in that intro, but, like, my favorite is, like, just... <laughs> someone, like, like trailing behind an apple for Ryuk and he's like chasing it and at the very end he like catches it and he's like doing this stupid little dance <laughs> oh, I'm actually re both relieved and surprised how much I'm enjoying watching Death Note again I know I've uh I know I've mellowed out on my stance of anime since I've lost all interest in it but um you know, it's it's still not really something that I have, like, ever an urge to, like, go sit down and watch. It, it, uh, like, every now and then, I'll sit down for something, and it's usually just to, like, do nostalgia, but... I, I am glad I'm, like, legitimately enjoying Death Note. It's a, it's a fun show. And it's it, it's it does a pretty good job, overall, of just, like... I don't know. It's so serious for so much of it, but then they have all of these, like, little subtle humor points throughout it that I just, I, that I remember loving so much, and, and I'm just, I'm, like, reliving it, like, all over again. Like, I forget what he was talking about, but I, I think L was, like, explaining to the police how he uses, like, two other, uh, aliases to kind of prevent people from, uh discovering him as well and like he picks off the strawberry from his cheesecake and he's like I'll give you this strawberry if you don't tell anybody <laughs> it's just I don't know it's so good and then there are those like super over the top moments where Light is like and while they're watching me I'll eat this potato chip <laughs> it's so good so good we should talk about the game we're fighting a boss so we had an easy boss where we fought hashtag rain and hashtag cloud, and then when we defeated them, they got up and did the fusion dance, and now they're hashtag rain cloud. And if there's one thing I love, it's having hashtags in my video games. I love taking the number one best parts of social media and putting them into the thing I like to do to escape reality. It's so good. Hashtag rain cloud, hashtag subscribe, hashtag donate to my Patreon, hashtag stay tuned to the end of this video for an offer for Blue Apron. <laughs> uh, I, I know why those things are important. It's just... 
sometimes they just really take me out of the video. Makes me kind of like miss the days when creators were like totally in charge of their own things, but you know, it's, it's a obnoxious, complicated business now, so I, I get why it happens. But I am kind of like really confused why <laughs> these robots have hashtag there. I don't know, maybe Rain Cloud would look stupid, but I don't know. Hashtag Rain Cloud, that feels like something clickbaity that you'd see trending on like Twitter or Instagram or something. I don't know. Thing is though, it's not really a robot. It, it's got like the same model as like one of the types of enemies we fought in the second half of Volume 1. And I think we'll see those enemies again as well in Volume 2. But, oh, Nelly, look at all that experience. It wasn't even hard. I wasn't even paying attention. Vokdon. Yeah, Vokdon is, Vok is the fire element in the Dot Hack universe, so Gaspard's got himself a fire attack. I thought that matters much. I still don't really think elemental attacks mean anything in GU. I should I should go and like do some experimenting sometime with some ex some of the uh, elemental things. Like I honestly can't see them being useful for anything at all. Like all of the customizable things you put on your weapons and armor. Maybe your armor because. I guess the upside of fighting, like, the same two enemies throughout an entire area is that if you fight one of the, uh, you fight one of the enemies that will consistently do, like, a certain element, you can at least equip yourself properly for it, but I, I don't know. I, I, like I said way long time ago, I'm not really the kind of guy that will constantly adjust what kind of customizable stuff is on his armor. I really just prefer to have one universal thing for it. Like, I never really do the, you know, fire resistance or anything like that. I, I'd rather do just, like, a general, like, you know, reduce physical attacks damage by 10% or... My, or what I prefer to do is just, like, a status counter. Because... I don't know, I've always really liked status effects, but when you have to, like, waste a turn casting it, it just kind of doesn't always feel worth it unless you're, like, in a long battle. So I'd rather to do, like, automatic things where, like, if you get hit, they'll get affected with sleep or something like that. Oh! <gasps> Alcade! Oh, and it's the, t <laughs> the telephone pole. <laughs> Oh my. I just Well, I'm never going to give that up. It's mine, you hear me? It's all mine. Mm. Wait a minute. Isn't that Ecolos? Ecolos serious character, serious. <laughs> just kidding. They're all serious. No, he wasn't Hisao. If you can't tell, he's like a freaking rabid dog now. Even hunched over, he is, like, ridiculously tall. Like, I know al is short, but, like, Sirius is, like, a hundred feet tall. Close, anyway. Hey. You. So, what's with him? You know this Yeah, most things are Haseo's fault. My fault? What the hell is she talking about? You don't have to understand it, Haseo. You just have to accept it. Anyway, so <laughs> that's all that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Maybe we'll find out what Alcade specifically is blaming Haseo for. So have a good one guys. Bye bye.